Welcome back. Today we are fitting Oberon Performage Slave Clutch Cylinder for my KTM Super Duke 990. Let's do it together. But first, I'm going to show you why I'm doing what I'm doing today. The other day I was riding back home, as normal, um, and I noticed on one of the roundabouts, with the clutch fully pressed in, uh, the bike started to slowly jerk forward like I was releasing the clutch but I wasn't the clutch was fully in um, and that indicated to me uh, there is a there is a lot of pressure somewhere the hydraulic fluid um, Maguera oil from the clutch it was whipping somewhere I just wasn't sure where after a little bit of troubleshooting I narrowed it down to this part over there um, I need to take it apart to show you what exactly went wrong First of all, I want to give myself easy access to all this part, so I wanted to remove all the furniture. Luckily, in the uh, Super Duke 990 case, it's not too bad because I got three bolts and that front sprocket cover comes off quite easily. It's not necessary to remove it, but it just makes life slightly easier in the long run because you don't have all this plastic here in the way. Then what I'd like to do once that uh, slave, slave clutch cylinder is still attached to the bike, uh, I want to crack open the banjo bolt over here. That's a 13 mm spanner. Not all the way, just crack it open once it's attached to the bike. You're going to make life easier in the long run. After that you can either remove the uh, complete assembly of the slave cylinder, but I would like to, because I'm replacing the whole thing, so I need to remove the banjo bolt. I'm going to do it now. Um, Normally, once you crack this open, it will start leaking. If you have, if you have um, uh, fluid, clutch fluid um, oils in the top reservoir, it will be all in this holes here and start leaking. Uh, however, I've stripped this before. I took it apart completely because I diagnosed the diagnosing the fault with it. So I drain all that fluid, all that oil, Maguire's oil I've got, and I completely drain it so nothing is leaking from here. Um, but at this part, remember which way uh, the banjo bolt, because it's directional. Well, it's not directional, it's, it's got a, was it 90 degrees bend in it? Remember which way it was. It was all the way there, so kind of take a picture or, uh, or make sure you remember how it goes. You can remove it and put it somewhere safe, yeah? Don't lose it. And at that point, we're ready to remove the part in question. Slave clutch cylinder over here. We got two bolts, eight mil head. And here you need to be careful. I try to stay out of your sight. You need to be careful, and I'll show you why. It comes up with the whole assembly, um, the bracket that holds the uh, uh, cover for the plastic cover for front sprocket we removed before. We can remove the whole thing, which I'm going to do like this. We're gonna get to this part later. What you need to worry about is little pin over there. I don't know if you can see it. This part over here, and it moves from side to side. Let me zoom you in on this side. You know what I'm talking about. What I'm referring to is this little pin over here. As you can see, it move from one side to the other side and um, I've read on the forums it's very easy to lose this bad boy because nothing holds it in place you can physically move it on from one side and it drops somewhere on the floor you may not even know it's there so remember about this bad boy over there don't lose it, keep it in place or take it out and keep it somewhere safe but I would recommend keep it there keep it in place when you do doing your house, housekeeping because that's necessary later on it's got like a locating groove um, on the other part we removed from here so that needs to go in there and I hold this your clutch bolt over here in place now unless you purchase the Oberon upgrade um, clutch cylinder with a backing plate which is not necessary uh, you may want to just take this piece apart and keep the uh, KTM plastic backing part over here and uh, that's relatively easy to do it just comes apart like this 
Yeah, that's the part we're replacing. Basically, this is no longer needed here because that was my problem. I'll tell you why in a minute. And uh, there's another couple of parts over here. There's like locating dowels in here. Don't lose them. That all comes apart. As you can see, you can just separate them all. Simple as that. I'm not going to do it um, right now. I've done it before. Give it a good clean. Locating dowels goes in here. And this part we're going to reuse um, unless you are using... Uh, Ober Oberon back in, um, back in plate uh, which replaces this part but I'm gonna keep it as it is for time being no need to upgrade this in my opinion okay at first I thought that was an o-ring that's causing the problem because that little piston over here moves the fluid comes from the top yeah and that piston moves slightly out back and forth back and forth and that basically engages the clutch so I thought the problem was an o-ring so I order a new o-ring from KTM, well from KTM Dilla, which is only a 10 pounds delivered and I went go ahead to replace it however what I discovered it's not an o-ring after all the problem was this little piston over here don't know how well you can see it camera probably won't pick it up but on the other side of it there's a little nipple right give it a good clean that's basically the design of it, you know, it's got a little spring and that spring sits over this nipple and that moves the piston back and forth, back and forth to engage your clutch. If the camera can focus on this little thing here you can see tiny microscopic hairline crack just when the nipple joins the actual plate. You see it's not on this side but it appears what I too twisted. You can just about see it right there so what was happening all the fluid clutch fluid um, oils from behind when it's pushing the, the piston was oozing through the inside over here when there's a little ball bearing and that ball bearing was attacking that little bolt over here and that bolt that pin that pushes your clutch engages your clutch and that clutch fluid that oil was oozing through here and that is my problem unfortunately I can't replace this part alone. I would probably buy it for like a fiver, you know. Uh, but that part alone is not. Um, well, you can't buy it. Sad. I know somebody suggested I could probably, you know, JB Weld it over here, and and that would probably work just as good. But I don't want to have a repaired part like this, you know, bought with JB Weld, and I'm want to rely on my bike, you know. I can be hundreds of miles away from home, and I'm gonna give. Um, I'm not gonna risk it, you know. So. Um, I had two options. I can either buy a original replacement part, just like this, or buy an upgrade. I went with the Oberon, and obviously I went with orange. I wanted black, but black was out of stock and I need the Harry, so I got orange. I think it looks pretty sick. Let's fill it in. The replacement Oberon or upgrade Oberon um, clutch slave clutch cylinder comes with the unit itself, a couple of um, spare bolts. A ball bearing and two new uh, copper washers which is very handy first thing I need to do on this bad boy is remove that uh, protective nipple here that's got grease all inside the uh, that new slave cylinder I need to install the ball bearing right there all I need to do just drop it in nice and greasy down there I can feel it's moving beautiful now these parts we're reusing keep it clean because we're going to push that uh, beautiful brand new orange Oberon slave clutch cylinder right in here and we're going to pre-install it back where it came from and that's quite should be quite straightforward thing to do Remember by that pin over there, that it's very easy to lose. And just like this, put it back in the original spot. At this stage I'm using the new bolts provided by the Oberon. I mean why not? The old KTM bolts are absolutely fine, but I've got the new ones. Why not use the new ones provided by the guys who uh, designed this thing?
always do it by fingers. That's my philosophy first. We don't cross, cross thread and shit. Not even sure it goes in nicely. You can use tools. Now at this stage I remove that blanking plate over here. And note that I fitted it loosely. I didn't torque it up away to the spec. I can still move it back and forth ever so slightly. And the reason for that is I want to pre-fill the actual slave cylinder over here with um, uh, the recommended clutch fluid. I'm using Pewter Line, but you can use whatever you want. Um, I'm going to pre-fill it and that's going to help me uh, get rid of all the air bubbles from the actual inside the cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Yeah, be careful, don't make a mess like I just did. It really doesn't take much. But pressing it back and forth. There we go. I'm hoping that's going to make my life easier when I need to bleed that thing, because you know the easiest play things to, to bleed, trust me. Let me show you what I'm doing here, closer if I can. So I pull just a few drops of that fluid in there and never so gently press it and once you press, don't press it too hard because it will just ooze out. You can hear the air bubbles escaping. That's it. And a little bit more. They're going down. It's all the way to the top now, but if I press it gently, you can see it's going down. Or not, because it's nearly full. Which is going to make my life a lot easier trying to bleed this thing. Because bleeding free from top to bottom ain't going to work in this case. Believe me, I tried it. Yeah, that's pretty much full right now. When I press it, no air bubbles escaping. It's just fluid now. Happy days. Right, moving on. Right, so I got the old banjo bolt by the new washers. Copper washer, so we're going to put a copper washer. The cable. Oh, the hose, should I say, another cable. And another copper washer on the bottom. And fit it in exactly the way. Put the other one bad boy in there. And again, doing it by hand. All the way before I apply any tools to it. Now we need to bleed the thing, and there is no fluid anywhere in the system. And pushing it from top to the bottom, it's going to be a major pain in the ass, trust me. Because that little hose, it's so small, and all the air bubbles just don't want to go down, do they? So we need to push it from bottom to the top. So what I've got, I've got myself a 100mm syringe and a bit of a plastic elastic um, tube what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fill the syringe with uh, with my oil my fluid open this nipple up and very gently push it all the way here so hopefully all the fluid will appear up there in the master cylinder now, this seems like a tricky part and it kind of can be tricky but it's not the end of the world I'm gonna open that nipple here Attach the hose to it, push it all the way down, and make sure the fluid is in the bottom. So no air is pushed down down the uh, down that little hose. And once that is the case, I'm going to push 
on my little syringe and hope for the best. At this stage we're pretty much halfway there because I managed to uh, push the fluid all the way up uh, with quite a bit of effort, let me, let me tell you this much but at the moment there are no air bubbles there's gonna be air bubble every now and again up here that's why I'm gonna keep an eye on it for the next couple of days but other than that we're pretty good and the clutch feels still is a bit uh, too spongy and that is down to the master um, cylinder over here and well this part over here and that is the little tiny nipple for it um, so we need to bleed this bad boy we need a um, 6 mil spanner, I don't have spanner this small but I've got a little um, 6 mil socket on the uh, screwdriver bit and you need to be very very gentle in it because it's a tiny little thread um, so no need to lean on it, literally two fingers, that's all it takes I'm gonna give it a few good pumps about 10 pumps or so hold that clutch lever in gently open it and close it back up as you can see that the fluid squirted through it and the clutch feels already 10 times better I'm going to repeat this process uh, half a dozen times just to make sure all the air is out from the system and um, yeah, see what happens then at this stage uh, the clutch is operating really well I can feel nice and firm action going over here um, I lost in the process the nipple cover. <laughs> I need to get a. I need to get a new one. Well, I think I lost it some time ago, but it doesn't matter. Um, there are no air bubbles coming from from uh, the reservoir. There are no air bubbles coming from the master cylinder. And well, I didn't test the slave cylinder at that point, but it's all looking good. It's all looking firm. All I need to do now take it for a test ride. Yeah guys, so I just got back from a very quick test ride, um, no issues so far, uh, the clutch feels really nice, it does feel slightly uh, lighter, but that's the uh, Oberon upgrade for you, the uh, slave um, cylinder, slave clutch cylinder, it's an upgrade from the Oberon, um, they made the piston bigger or smaller, one way or the other, I don't want to get into too many details about it uh, they made it, um, the clutch operation is it's lighter and I believe it is slightly, ever so slightly lighter I don't have exact comparison, you know, uh, original to Oberon so I can give you the exact uh, information but I'm pretty sure uh, it wasn't as light as it is it's gonna make life easier, especially riding in traffic uh, in heavy traffic with the clutch operation, it's happening all the time um, but I can upgrade, update you guys later on this uh, on this subject. But at the time being, my KTM is back on the road, uh, which is always good news because I love the bike. Um, and hoping this video help you out a little bit if you're thinking of upgrading your uh, clutch slave cylinder to to the Oberon one, or if you want to replace one with a standard factory one because you have an issue. Either or, I hope that helps. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Rock hard, have a beer, and we see you very soon.